Obviously, this is a Rwandan practice, and you said you are from Nigeria as well. And you briefly mentioned that in Nigeria you guys practice it too. That's the first time I've heard of it. Like that in Nigeria and Ghana, they've practiced it, practiced this. Because I know certain, I have certain Ghanaian friends that are aware of Kunyaza, but it's only because they travelled to Rwanda and found out, and Uganda and they found out about Kunyaza there. Um, but it's interesting that you're saying that you guys have this practice in Nigeria. Can you explain it a little bit? Because to my understanding, it was just an East African um, practice. Yeah, so the, um, the Nigerians that practice it is, is practicing parts of northern Nigeria, um, where we've got a, we've got um, an ancient, you could say, sexual practice or tradition called Kayan Mata, which mm -hmm. refers to natural aphrodisiacs. And this is where women teach women. Um, they provide concoctions in terms of how they can heighten desire and cultivate um, desire, desire, and obviously enjoy more pleasurable relationships. And they learn from other cultures and they came across, like I've spoke to a number of Nigerian women who, who speak about Kunyaza, but obviously the Kunyaza that they, they, that they teach is from Rwanda. So it's not like a Nigerian version, shall we say, mm. of Kunyaza. So um, that's where a number of Nigerians that I'm aware of, how they teach it is from the Kunyaza, is from the Rwandans that they've heard, 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 taught, learned about their practice. And since the documentary Sacred Water came out in 2016, yeah. and there's been a number of articles about Kunyaza, I think a number of people, even as far as Brazil, there's Brazilians that practice Kunyaza as well. That's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. And it just shows how we globally are just interlinked anyway. So, um, and it's about taking the good of something, highlighting it and letting it like seep elsewhere. Um, I think it's amazing because obviously you touched on the um, our ideologies when we think about Africans and sex and it's always like negative where the female is oppressed or she has M F G M is it F G M F F G M F yeah so even can I just touch on yeah. that as well so even with female genital um, F G M known yeah. as female genital mutilation I think it's important that we as Africans understand what it is and who defines it because mm -hmm. there is another. Um, practice in Rwanda and also Gukuna, parts of no. Gukuna, yeah. which refers to labia elongation or labia stretching. Mm -hmm. Now, when the World Health Organization, when they found out about this practice, mm -hmm. they initially classified it as FGM, FGM as yeah. female genital mutilation. Mm -hmm. Then, when a number of Africans, um, you know, they said it's not a form of mutilation, mm -hmm. and you know, they then they reclassified it and called it female genital modification. Oh. So sometimes you, add, but then the question is, who are the World Health Organization, which obviously predominantly made up of Europeans, yeah. to define what is acceptable and unacceptable practices? Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm getting? As long as again, um, as long as the practice is, um, as long as a woman gives her consent and she's happy with it, mm -hmm. I've got no issue with it. But I'm just. I find it problematic that we always rely on Europeans or Westerners to de to define what is um, appropriate sexual practices. Mm, yeah, so so for me, um, with FGM, don't get me wrong, I'm not for um, any form of FGM, but I just think it's important that we, as Africans in particular, when we're hearing some of these terms, um, we need to make sure we understand who defines what is FGM and what's not FGM. Because I even read an article not so long ago where they were trying to reclassify male circumcision to be a form of genital mutilation as well really? right exactly so if the if the world health organization has turned around and says okay um male circumcision because it's not done for any health reasons wow and it, yeah it's a form of genital mutilation are we going to subscribe to that mm. the, no no but this is the thing so that means we and this is why i'm saying that Things like this, you highlighting something that is good. Uh, the way I see it is like, it's a hidden diamond. And you highlighting the hidden diamond, bringing it to light, allowing people to see. Obviously, not everyone is going to agree to this at first stance. I mean, my mother, to this day, she always questions why I'm doing this, why I'm talking about this. And I'm like, listen, this is our culture. I'm going to talk about it. And um, like we're saying off, off air that... We as Africans sometimes we're very easy to, or we are very susceptible to adapt other people's culture and then forget about our own. 